And this is Harvest Ministries. Harvest stands for Happy and Redeemed Vessels enjoying salvation together so glad that the lord has seen for us to come back and be with you and and live here in the studio grateful for god's many blessings that he has blessed us with hope that you've had a good week in the lord amen and that you continue to pray for one another grateful for what the lord has blessed us with to be able to do and to help people and those that are in need. Hope that we are being an encouragement to you. Uh, if you'd like to see some of the things that uh, Harvest Ministry is doing, you can uh, view our website at www.harvestradio and streetministries.com. Save that to one of your favorites, so all you got to do is just click on it. Check us out. It gives you information, it shows you live video clips of what we're doing here in the radio station and also out there on the streets we've got videos as well and of course the audio recordings are being recorded and those are put up on the youtube channel so check and see what harvest ministries is about and what we are doing matthew chapter 25 i'm going to pick up in verse 6 and read a few verses of scripture this is jesus speaking about the parable of the ten virgins and the Bible says this in verse 6, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Amen. And if we could take our text, if the Lord will help us and we need Him to, verse 10, and we're going to speak about they that were ready. They that were ready. God has sent us His Word to warn us of what is to come. Uh, he lets us know that there is a penalty to not heeding to His Word. His Word is His love toward mankind. And yet Jesus says here, And they that were ready. And they that were ready. Are we ready? Are we getting ready? Amen. Do we know that we know that we know. Amen. Do you know Him like you need to know Him, like you should know Him? This past week's ministry, we were down there. There came a young man after uh, the service and the feeding basically was over. We were, we were packing up the things uh, that we had. And this week, this past week, we were blessed. Thank you from the fire, the Saddle Tree uh, Lumberton Fire Department there. Uh, they blessed us with uh, blankets that they had uh, from the hurricane disaster. They blessed us to be able to share. And, and uh, we were giving out blankets. And uh, I had one for an older gentleman that was staying in some temporary housing. He was up underneath the bridges, but he got flooded out. But I was holding one of those blankets because I was carrying some things to the house or the place that he was staying at for another couple that was there. Some donations because... They have a little moped, or most of the time they walk, and it was a considerable distance. So Sister CJ was dropping some stuff off. But anyway, I had a blanket for the gentleman, and this young man comes up, and he's looking, you know, and he was like, you know, do you, do you have anything else? And, you know, I, was, I, I felt bad because the blanket was, you know, just laying right there, and I just couldn't tell, tell him no. So I grabbed that blanket, and I gave it to him. And uh, uh, he asked if there was any food left. And, and I had to tell him, you know, you, you missed it, man. It's, it's, it's all gone. Now, even though uh, God has helped us and blessed us to be able to print a two-foot by three-foot calendar, 
and it's posted in a box outside of the, the fenced-in area that we minister in that tells us what time each ministry starts, who's coming, and what time they're going to be there. And even though information is gave out to folks, it doesn't take long to find out that the food don't last long around there. See, that's we give you a starting time. But however, especially when you're conducting service, you just see how long the Lord uh, leads you. But, but no matter how many times that I've been down there, uh, we tell people, and how many times, listen now, we can sit in the church and we show people, there's always people that seem to be missing out. And what happened was, is, and I still, I see this young man's face, and his expression on his face stuck out to me for the rest of the whole week. And God was, was building this message in my heart and in my mind as I thought about that young man and how that he missed it, how that he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready when the service began. He wasn't there to get what was being given out. And I think about how many of us have this scene daily in our lives. Amen. We play this scene out daily in our lives when we have loved ones that are not ready. We have loved ones. And for whatever reasons those loved ones have that they're not changing, they're not attempting to even try to get ready. Amen. They're not even attempting to get ready. But when something happens, the face that they make, their expression when they realize I'm too late. I missed out. This has happened. Tragedy has come. You know, the face, the expression that comes to us when we realize we missed it. Oh God, God help us because it's going to happen when the day of the Lord, when He returns to come and get His children, we are talking about they that were ready. We've got to be ready in the day and the hour that we're living in because we read here in that day we're not going to be able to share what we do have. Amen? Verse 9, it said, But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. We can't jeopardize what is sustaining us. What God has gave unto us, yes, He gave freely, and we are to freely give, but there's going to come a situation and a place that we will find ourselves in that we're not even going to be able to share. We cannot give out the source. We cannot give out the oil. In this case is what they were talking about. We've got to keep it flowing within us. We've got to keep in contact with our source, Jesus. And you say, well, what kind of day is that that you can't even share Jesus when your life is being threatened? Your very life is being threatened. And that source, you are ready. You've been prepared because of what God has said was going to happen, going to come. We must guard our hearts, guard our minds, the things that we associate ourselves with because we are still here in the world. But if we are not careful, we can get the mindset of so many other people that are out there and say, oh, it's not going to happen like that. That's why the churches are filling up for those that are lacking to tell people the truth. Now, everybody, you can get the crowd as long as you don't tell me the truth. And what they've done, they've got the mindset and in their heart saying, oh, it's not going to happen or it's not going to happen like that or God wouldn't let that happen. Friend let me tell you what he said in verse 10 and while uh, they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him. Amen to the marriage and the door was shut. Those that were ready went in with Jesus and the door was shut. You know, folks, I, I mean, our church world is sitting here in the day and hour that's in and what we're associating ourselves with and we're feeling like, oh, it's not going to happen that way or, oh, it's going to work out like this or, oh, God wouldn't let that happen. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of the people that see the signs, the road signs that are coming up that says left lane or right lane ahead closed. Huh? And they wait till the last minute and expect you to let them in. But they got the signs. 
They've got all the heating. They've got all the warning that this is closed. And instead of just getting over, huh? Getting over why you have the time so that all of us can keep moving. No, we got some that just want to barrel on through and expect you to let them in. When we all have been told what we needed to do. And in the meantime, you know, that is the very reason why we have the backups. Huh? Uh, if we would just do it, most likely we wouldn't get stuck. But there's always the one that tries. There's always the one that tries it. And, and I've seen with my own eyes that they don't always succeed. The door is shut. They were not let in. Somebody said, not today. You're going to wait like the rest of us. You need to get over like the rest of us did. You know, what gives you the right? And that is the society that we live in is I don't have to deal with the rules. I do what I want to do and you are to accept it. That is where we are today. Help us, Lord. But the Bible says like this in Psalms 32 in the first part of verse 6, For this shall everyone that is godly pray. Everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. This is your road sign. Pray. The godly praying unto thee in the time when thou may have been be found. Praying because we know now God can be found. Pray. Amen. This is the road sign. He's telling us what we need to do. Pray while He can be found. Why He can be found. But no, they're going to stand there like verse 11 and they came and they said, Lord, Lord, open to us. The foolish virgins came as they went to try to buy more of the source, more of the oil. And they came back and they said, Lord, will you open unto us? And this is what Jesus said to them in verse 12. He said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. I know you not. That's going to be a sad day to come to the realization and realize that Jesus does not know you. I don't want to hear those words, do you? But, but He told us in Matthew 7, very familiar Scripture because whenever we hear maybe those words being together, He said, I know you not. When they said, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And He said, I know you not. We, we come from the Scripture there in Matthew 7 and He speaks unto us and, and it said in verse 22 where it said, Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, and they explained to God all the things that they did. And then he tells them in verse 23, he said, I'm professing to you, I never knew you. Depart from me. But let's look at what verse 21 says. Huh? Before we get to that point, he said there, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Here's the point. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Let's look at verse 21. But he that doeth the will of my Father, the ones that have heeded to the road signs, the ones that have prayed why he can be found, the ones that have trimmed the lamps, that have kept the oil, that have kept in contact with the source, amen, the ones that have, that have done the will of the Father, those that are ready, those that are ready, doing the will of of the Father. I struggle every day just like you in a sense of battling the flesh, battling discouragement. But amen, can I tell you that my daily reminder is I do what I do because of the Lord. I do what I do for the Lord. Whatever I am doing, I am doing for the Lord. Let it be me on my job and whatever that I do, I am doing before and for the Lord. This is where He has placed me. That is what He's blessed me with. I love it. I enjoy it. But you may not feel appreciated at the times. And the earth that we live on will make us feel all sorts of being unappreciated. 
But again, remind yourself like I remind myself and I say, I do this before the Lord and I do this for the Lord. I don't do this to get a gift. I don't do this to get an accolade. I don't do this to get a pat on the back. I don't do this to rub shoulders or to get to know somebody. I do this because this is what God has placed in my life. I do this for the Lord. And I do this to the fullest of my ability that God has gave me. And we've got to be reminded. Because so many a times we are not appreciated for the things that we do necessarily by one another that's in the flesh. But I tell you what, they sure will recognize when you don't do something. Uh oh. Hallelujah. That seems like when we, when, we, when we get noticed is when we don't do something for somebody or something. Help us, Lord. But remember, you do what you do for the Lord. And you're doing it before the Lord. Because let us be reminded that our time may come. We may die. We may pass away before the Lord ever returns back to this earth. And are we ready? Or we may be here when He returns. But either way, we've got to live by Jesus' word that He spoke to us here in verse 13. And He tells us, He says, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. We don't know the day nor the hour when He's coming. And when we're going to take our last breath, we don't know how we're going to die. We don't know how we're going to leave this world. But the bottom line is this. Be ready. To them that are ready. And they that are ready. But He was speaking to those that, that were ready and He's letting us know because His Word tells us over and over and over again. Let me just share some scriptures with you. Matthew 24. Jesus says this in verse 42. He said, Watch therefore ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. We're talking about they that were ready. Jesus just told them the chapter before, Watch therefore for ye know not what hour the Lord doth come. Verse 44, Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not, as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. At the time, at the hour, at the place that we don't think that He's coming, He's liable to come. When we ain't even got our mind on Him, He may require our soul. Be ready. He talked about those that were ready, they entered in. And that door was shut. It was done. It was over. There was nothing else, nothing more that could be done. Over in Mark's uh, Gospel, Jesus speaking here, He said, Take ye heed. I'm reading out of chapter 13, verse 33. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. He's telling us here, watch and pray. Because you don't know the time. But if we're in our prayer chamber, we can begin to spiritually link up with Him and we'll have that unctioning. We'll just have that awareness in our spirit. No, we're not going to know the day and hour, but we can have that fervency and that essence to know. Hallelujah. I need to watch and pray because I don't know the time, but the bottom line is this. I want to be ready, don't you? He said in verse 35, Jesus again, Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh. Woo. At Eden, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. We don't know what time of day that he's going to come. But he said, Watch. Because you don't know when the Master is going to come. That's what they were saying there. He said, and at midnight, at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. At midnight, they slumbered, they slept, they had trimmed their lamps as they got up and they realized the foolish one said, I don't have what it takes to make it. Give me some of what you got. And the wise one said, No, I can't share. Because I've got to make it. It's going to come in that day and hour. And God forbid. You know, I mean, you, you, you hate to even have that in your mind 
to know that there's a day that maybe you can't even share that. But it's going to happen. Because if you want to make it, you can't give what you got. You understand what I'm saying? You've got to have this for yourself. You've got to have your own oil. He's coming. We don't know when He's coming. But are we ready? Are we really ready? Some of us think that we're ready. But again, like I said, you've got to know that you know that you know. Last reference scripture I want to try to leave with us is in Luke's Gospel 21. Verse 36, Jesus speaking again, Watch ye therefore and pray always. Ooh, listen to this. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. He's made a way of escape. Again, His Word tells us what is to come and it tells us the way of escape to be ready. But He also tells us the penalty that is there when we're not ready. But let's, let's look at the verse 34. What are you talking about? What are these things that are going to come? And Jesus was speaking here. He said, Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that the day come upon you unawares. We'll be so wrapped up in our daily routine, our daily uh, things to do. Listen, for for as a snare shall come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. There's a trap that's laid out for every one of us. And we ought to be there to encourage one another. Hey, there's a trap down there. Hey, there's a landmine down there. Because the devil is out to maim us. He's out to steal and to kill and destroy, yes, but He's also out there to maim you, to get you wounded, and then He will infect that wound on you. But it's going to come as a snare. But Jesus said, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape. All these things that shall come to pass. He's telling us now what is going to happen. And you can stand before the Son of Man. We can do that. Why? Because we're ready. Because we're ready. And as the five wise virgins, as Jesus was using in the parable, and because they were ready, they went in with Him to the marriage. Because they were ready. Amen? Looking to God, the author, the finisher of our faith, and knowing that it is by and through the Lamb of God that we have the joy and the peace that we get to experience today only because of what Christ has gave us. Isn't He a good God? To know and they that were ready. They that were ready. Lord, I want to be ready. Don't you want to be ready? Don't you want to be encouraged to be ready? I don't want to to be the one to say, hey, Brother Daniel, give me some of your oil. And you say, no, I can't because I won't have enough for me and you if I give you. you got to go get your own, sister. And that's where we're at. The day's going to come. But oh, if we're ready, guess what? We're going to be able to escape those places. But we've got to be ready. We've got to continue to have the source of the oil burning in our lives and in our lives. And not so foolish to think as the world wants us to think that it's not going to happen. That He ain't coming or it's not going to be as bad as as you say it is and God won't do this to His people and that's where we get to that mindset we act like we try to sugarcoat it water it down and just act like it's no big deal but friend as I've been preaching the last couple weeks sin is a very big deal oh yes yes. sin is a very big deal Mm -hmm. so this Saturday He's come by to let us know that they that were ready. They got to go in with Him. They didn't shut the door, but He shut the door. So let it be encouraged. They that were ready went in to be with Him. Be encouraged. Be ready. If God's dealing with your heart, surrender it to Him. You'll be glad that you did. We thank God for this opportunity and we pray something's been said to encourage your heart. And we thank God. In Jesus' name, have a great day.